okay now the liquid ammonia that we took will come this nh3 will come and one nh3 will give hydrogen to this c minus another nh3 will give hydrogen to this c minus and finally we have a neutral alkene right and the sodium and after losing one hydrogen this nh3 becomes nh2 minus and sodamide would be formed as a side inorganic product but we have this alkene right so our final product this time i'm sorry this will be in trans form this hydrogen will be attached get attached to this c minus and the final product would be this so now we have a trans alkene all right now the obvious the next question that comes should come in your mind is why reaction should stop at this stage now this sodium can also reduce the other pi bond like it has reduced one of the pi bond in alkyne and the reaction can go to the stage of alkene but that will not happen because sodium is actually solvated by this liquid ammonia and because of that solvation process the reactivity of sodium has been reduced and because of that reduced reactivity sodium now is a weaker reducing agent than it would have been otherwise so because of that reduced reactivity the reduction power of sodium has been reduced so it for it it was able to re reduce alkyne but it will not be able to reduce this alkene so reaction will stop at this stage and we will have alkene as the final product right so that's how we reduce alkyne and we get alkene the first method of preparation was using lenard catalyst the other one is reduced is by using sodium and liquid ammonium Lin lenard catalyst method gives us gave us cis alkene and this kind of reduction using sodium and liquid ammonia will give us trans alkene fine so now we have learned two method of preparation of alkene let's move on next method of preparation would be dehydrohalogenation this kind of term we have heard in decarboxylation i, I have taught you decarboxylation called base electrolysis and soda lime decarboxylation decarboxylation means removing of carboxyl group dehydro means removing of hydrogen dehalogenation means removing of halogen dehydrohalogenation means removing of both hydrogen and halogen suppose this is a substrate it's a alkyl halide and i have added a base now base and nucleophile we had a discussion a detailed discussion between nucleophile and base before if you miss that out or if you don't if you're not aware of difference between base and nucleophile go back to the lecture study the difference between base and nucleophile and come back then only you will be able to understand the reaction that we are going to study now now since i have written b minus it's a base and this base will not react or will not substitute this halogen so there will be no sn2 reaction base by definition reacts with hydrogen right so because it's base so it will react with hydrogen any of the hydrogen depending upon the situation right so this is a base so there will be no nucleophilic substitution reaction it's a base it's going to abstract hydrogen so now what happens is let me let me first write this hydrogen now i'll tell you why this hydrogen because the, there is no scope for reaction with other hydrogens so for the time being let's consider this hydrogen and let's see what happens if this base reacts with this hydrogen now since it's a base it will start to abstract hydrogen now abstraction of hydrogen will be a slow and gradual process what happens actually is this base puts electron into the anti orbital of hydrogen and this hydrogen gave push backs the electron into the orbital of this carbon so but we show it like this that this base is kind of up, kind of abstracting pulling taking away this hydrogen atom this is the way we show so this base is abstracting this hydrogen and the bond the electron in this bond is going into the orbital of 
this carbon right now what would happen is this carbon will start to gain electronic density now carbon don't they are not stable when they are in anionic form because they are small and they have less electronegativity value so negative charge in the orbital of carbon are not stable what would happen is this carbon is having a bonding orbital in this or in this bond and there's an anti bonding orbital on the other side so what would happen the, the this bond the electronic density in this bond which is going into the orbital of this carbon will now come out and go into the orbital anti orbital of this carbon because this carbon is not potent enough and if there is a scope of removal of electronic density from its orbital it will avail that scope and opportunity now this carbon puts electron into the or anti orbital of this carbon again the electronic density in this car this carbon will start to increase but this carbon also has a mechanism to remove that electronic increasing electronic density by pushing this electronic density into the orbital of this halogen and this halogen got no problem in accepting electronic density because of large size and higher electronegativity value so ultimately what will happen this hydrogen will go with this base this bh will come out this electronic density will go into the orbital anti orbital of this carbon so this carbon and this carbon will share electron so this carbon and this carbon will form a bond and that will be a because of sideways overlapping as you can see this bond and this anti bonding would be sideways so a pi bond will be formed between this carbon and this carbon and this x will come out so the product that you are going to get is this and look at this what is it this is an alkene so this becomes a method of preparation of alkene right right did you get it that's how it is now in this reaction as you can see this base is taking away hydrogen so this is dehydrogenation and this is all the halogen is also being removed so this is also dehalogenation so put together we call it dehydrohalogenation now this is a elimination reaction as you can clearly see and this is a sn2 mechanism because this is a concerted reaction it is happening in one step and in the R that single step is the rds of course and in the rds two molecules are present this substrate and this base so because of that molecularity of the reaction is 2 and this is e2 so this is elimination by molecular so this is a this reaction takes place via e2 mechanism right and uh, in general this is e2 and in particular this reaction is called dehydrohalogenation and the product is alkene now you, there there are various things to be discussed now if the first thing is why this hydrogen has been abstracted by the base as i told you why not other hydrogen why not this hydrogen let's see what happens when this hydrogen is abstracted by the base now suppose this hydrogen is abstracted by the base then suppose this hydrogen has been abstracted s plus has gone so bh comes out b comes out b minus comes out as bh now if we if if we abstract hydrogen if, if base abstract hydrogen from this carbon then this carbon will get negative charge suppose that happened and this carbon got a negative charge one hydrogen has been removed now this carbon since it has a negative charge it cannot dispel off this halogen and this carbon has no way to get rid of its negative charge because you know for this halogen to move out some electron has to come into this anti or bonding orbital and when electronic density increases from uh, in this anti bonding orbital then from the front bonding orbital electronic density goes into the bonding orbital of halogen for this halogen to come out the electronic density from this bond has to come into the orbital of this halogen and for the electronic density of this bond to go into the orbital of halogen someone has to increase the electronic density in the anti bonding of this carbon right so when you have a negative charge on 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 beside this carbon so this carbon can put electronic density into this orbital 
but when you have a negative charge on the carbon which has which has the anti bonding in which the negative charge should go so this negative charge is in the orbital of this carbon itself and this anti bonding is of the same carbon so this carbon will not get rid of neg its negative charge by putting its electron into the anti bond and in anti bonding of its of its own anti bonding this carbon will not get rid of any electronic density just by transferring negative charge from its own bonding orbital into its own bo anti bonding orbital because both bonding and anti bonding are of its own right in this case suppose you have a negative charge now this and bonding can put electron into the someone else's anti bonding when that happens this carbon effectively gets reduced its electronic density but when you have anti bonding and bonding of the same carbon it doesn't matter whether you put the electronic density in one orbital or transfer it to the other so this carbon will not put its an electron into the anti bonding and this halogen will not come out and even if even if under high temperature even if under certain certain circumstances that happens then there is no benefit of this carbon because when this electron goes into this orbital this comes out this comes out this gets filled and this becomes empty so this carbon now have a empty orbital right so it becomes another intermediate actually what would happen is this carbon will have two electrons like this because of this negative charge so it gets devoid of its two bond right one bond of this hydrogen the other bond of this halogen so this becomes carbene this is a intermediate that will be studying in the chapter amines this is uh, another intermediate like we now know cation ca anion and we know free radical this is another kind of intermediate this is called carbene so this will give rise to carbene so this hydrogen will not be abstracted and this carbene is formed at very high temperature even at high temperature it is not formed so there is no option of formation of carbene